So let's start with this. Are Catholics Christians? Hand on heart, could you make a better argument to being Orthodox, you feel like, or Roman Catholic? I'm not saying every service I'm perfectly engaged. I'm I think here. this Sunday you were sending me like eight ball pool. Yeah, I was trying to run three games at one time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah! <laughs> the glory filled the room. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> oh, man. That was difficult. I'm was, so proud of you. Uh, you you are a man of God. That's all I can say. That's what they that. say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. Okay. We've talked about this a, a number of times, but um, one thing I really appreciate about you, and then I'm like, yeah, dude, I totally, I totally share in that. Is I feel like I'm a uh, I, I, I feel like I'm a the, theological utilitarian. Yeah. I want the best from every tradition, and where Catholics are weak, I feel like Protestants are. I mean, that's broad, but Protestants are usually pretty strong. Yeah, and vice versa. So I'm like, dude, I want to learn from some of the best of them. But I had this conversation with somebody um, who uh, is a friend of mine, and we were talking. I was talking about this. And I was talking them to them about um, Catholicism and how there's certain things I love about it. And she she was like, "Okay, but don't don't um, Catholics believe in like a works based salvation?" And it gets on this whole topic of this, like in her mind, and she was being genuine. Like I I get it that you know to you or me we'd be like. But to her, you know, because she's maybe never engaged it, and there's a lot of nuance in Catholicism, there is this, like, are they the same as us? Where yeah. do we agree, disagree? So let's start with this. Um, are, are Catholics Christians? <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I totally uh, agree with the whole theological, yeah. and like, just philosophical and, and every, all the things utilitarian, like I'm pull, it, pulling things from every place. Doesn't it piss you off when people straw man a, a Catholic or an Orthodox view on something, and you know the better argument, and you're like, and you fi I find myself defending it. Oh yeah, like I find myself defending, and Catholics. I still might even disagree, but I'm like, that's not what they say about the Pope, bro. Right. I find myself defending Catholics praying to saints all the time yeah, because right. the Protestant explanation of what they believe and do is awful. And, and there is a legitimate critique, but oftentimes that's not what's presented. For right. People. Like I get their, their whole thing is beatific vision. When you die, you see and know everything that God sees and knows, and you hear everything he hears. So you're able to hear the prayers. Like I get it, why they can do it, why they would want to do it. Of course, when I get to heaven, I'm probably going to intercede for things that I cared about on earth. Hopefully, I think that's how it'll work, you know? Mm. I get what they're saying, but Protestants are just like, oh, no, it's just idolatry. And I'm like, oh, Ah, you're confused. Like, no, it's wrong for a different reason. And that's not the, right. so like when you weigh that as their criticism, like all oh, Protestants don't know what they're talking about. When I went to a Catholic church on a uh, All Saints Day because mm -hmm. I was like, this is a really big deal. I kind of yeah. just want to check it out. I've been, I went to a, a, a Catholic church on Ash Wednesday last year um, just because I like Ash Wednesday and I didn't know any, like my church wasn't doing it. Um, and so like, I loved that one. But this specific one I went to, the, the priest brought out a picture of his parents and he was like, yeah, I pray to mom and dad all the time. And I was like, what? What, wait, wait, dude? Hold on. Wait, the, like he brought like framed pictures? A framed big photo. <laughs> like a big. <laughs> no, no, dude. I was sitting. <laughs> Why would I, you do that, dude? I was sitting. This is his homily, bro. Yeah, that's one moment where like we need to go, come on, I, bro. Bro, I was like, dude, that was mid. Like this was the one I went to. The first one I went to was in like a nicer area it was a bigger church the priest he was young and it was like this was aw like it wasn't hip it was just cool the sound like it was great it was a great experience this one there was no music and i guess because it was like a during i'm not really sure why and then yeah dude massive portrait of his parents like really big i was sitting in the very back of this church it's which, leaned up which, against jesus on the crucifix <laughs> in the back he just has the back <laughs> Oh. For a Catholic church, you know, those things are long. They're built cruciform. So to be in the back, you're very far from that guy, sure, right? Yeah, yeah. And I could see like what they looked like. That's how big this framed photo was. Like it was, it's probably like a four foot tall photo. And he like brings it out and he's just like, I guess my mom and dad, because they're talking about All Saints Day and all this stuff. And he starts talking about like why he starts criticizing the Protestant argument. And it's the bad Protestant argument, not the good one. Like the one that I would actually wait. He starts criticizing, well, Protestants say it's idolatry and this and that. And it's like, no, it's just like asking somebody to pray for you. And I'm like, oh, 
but 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 that's what I think is still wrong. Like that, you're not getting it. And so, mm. the, when Protestants argue things against Catholics that being uninformed, it's like you're not doing us any favors when right. you do that. Um, and of course, you know, Catholics, you know, do their own thing as well. I engage with this um, this Catholic podcast, and they have a website, and they do apologetics and stuff like that. And I, I, the guy that I had messaged back and forth for a long time, and. Bro, at the very end of it, I wasn't offended, but I was a little bit like this. I thought we had a really good like conversation this whole time. And he's like, hey, on, be honest with me. He's like, is the reason you're not, you know, after talking with you, he's like, he, he, he said this. He's like, you are not what I was expecting when we were talking about Protestantism. Yeah. And I was like. Okay. He's like, is the reason you haven't converted because you don't think you could emotionally handle it? <laughs> no, really? Yes. And then I no, said, I said, dude. I said, I got to be honest with you. That question assumes so many things about me. Yeah. That makes like, it, and it's, about it's Protestantism as yes, well. Yes. But like, it's also, it's also just kind of saying like, there's not an intellectual stance you have. You just have this emotional, fe- you have this fear you're too flimsy of, yeah of, of diving in and then the guy messaged me afterwards and apologized like hey i didn't mean like that and i wasn't offended i was just more like this do you actually believe that yeah like that's gonna really dictate how you converse with people if you're like most people they're just scared to be poked <laughs> <laughs> yeah no not not a anyways okay but I, but you know i get catholics that dm me all the time uh, why aren't you catholic why aren't you catholic yeah. Uh, why, why, people even why are you protestant and every time i'm just like the reformation okay like <laughs> you may okay so you may appreciate more like if i if if we said today you cannot be protestant at all um you you can't be reformed you have to be one one of the eastern traditions or the roman catholic church i just from our conversations i feel like you would be like okay I, if i had to i'd be roman catholic yeah okay but that might be because you appreciate certain things and the West is beautiful and yeah, blah, totally. blah, blah. But could you actually make a better argument? Like, you know, hand on heart, could you make a better argument to being Orthodox, you feel like, or Roman Catholic? Um, okay, it's hard. Because that, that's a different question. Like, if I was going to be a layman, I would just, I would go Catholic. Um, yeah. I feel like it just would be easier to be Catholic. There's so much more to work with. Just... I don't know, because I, especially being someone in the West, like just there are so many more Catholics in the West than there are. For sure, yeah. So like, and like for me, dude, a bunch of my favorite authors mm-hmm. are are Catholics. Like Peter yeah. Kraft is one of my favorites. Chesterton. There was a guy. There's a Chesterton's not fair though. Why is that? Just because he's so good. Yeah, I know. It's like it that, sucks that he's Catholic. Almost. But 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 also he doesn't. He you know he's not like a Catholic apologist. You know, like he's no so, totally. He so he that's was. why it's 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 hard because it's like. Yeah. He is a little bit though. You can read like the well, thing. Yes, in yes, the, in the, his, yes. I'm the just thing. saying like, he's. Yeah, yeah. He definitely didn't love Protestantism. No, 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 no. He, right. I'm for just sure, saying, for sure. He's but not, he, but he's, he's not a not, theologian. Yeah, he's, he's not like yeah. the Catholic guy. He's yeah. more so Christianity. Totally, I get it. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like I know a lot more about Catholicism at this point because I'm so much more curious about it. From mm-hmm. what I've seen, like theologically, just. I'm more inclined to Roman Catholic Roman Catholicism on issues like I remember watching an interview and I don't know how accurate this this guy is, um, but you you brought like, like, uh no, <laughs> <laughs> you brought up like a uh, like the the whole like do Catholics believe in work based salvation? I know that both of us w- would be like okay, like there's something there's a conversation to be had there, but I don't get why Protestants view that as like the main difference between us because it's not. Um, but I also am just like, that's, it's really oversimplified, whatever. But then I was watching this interview and it was this uh, guy who was explaining all the different denominations and he was going and interviewing leaders in those denominations. And he asked an Orthodox priest about this and he was like, oh no, of course you do. It's like, no, 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 you earn your salvation by working for it. And I was like, I was dumbfounded. I was like, what in the world? Even if a Catholic believed that, they would never say it like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was just so shocked. I was like, what is going mm-hmm. on here? Um, but if I was going to be a lay person, I'm going Catholic, but if I got to become like a monk, I want to be one of those like schema monks that have like the highest rank, like Eastern Orthodox, but with the cool hats and the beards and they can get married. I th- well, not the monks, but Orthodox priests. Can oh, get monks married. can't. I know priests can, but yeah. But yeah, the monks, like there's like this special high level. There's very, they're very rare. And like, I saw a video of a guy. It was like when you, when you see a video of someone who catches a celebrity in public, yeah, yeah, yeah. this monk just like walking through the town, just like praying to himself in this red cloak thing. And I was like, oh. 
<laughs> so I, sick. So I, sick, dude. I don't it's like remember. A Jedi. Yeah, that is true. I don't remember his name, but he, he used to have the uh, Bible Answer Man show. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh. Anyways, okay, never mind. He became Eastern Orthodox wow. a few years ago. Um, That's like a thing right now, though. Like becoming Eastern Orthodox, like the 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 like Chad, like the the right, 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 right. the trad bro right, right, right. route is leading to East, a lot of people to Eastern Orthodoxy, which is super interesting. This last year, I discovered some Ortho Bros. I found yes, out. Ortho Bros. Yeah, dude, yeah, they're and, the worst, dude. dude. Anyways, let's not get on that because people are gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's <clears throat> let's divide this up into two things. Okay, um, and if you're listening to this and you're a little bit like triggered or whatever whatever you need to listen to both of these to both of these two things let's talk about um do you want to talk about what we disagree or what we agree with first let, maybe let's do agree yeah so if i if want to you set think a time crazy, on disagreement yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's so we're going to talk about we're going to talk about first what what do what can protestants learn from catholics or what if you what what do you what do you appreciate what have you learned what have you dug into yeah what do you want to steal from their tradition go hey I want to adopt this into my church, my life. I love this. Totally. Okay. Um, there's something my dad always says when we talk about Catholicism, because my uncle uh, became a Catholic a number of years ago. And so um, they, they talk about it all the time. And I Real quick, was he, was he a Protestant? Yeah, grew up Protestant oh, okay. and converted to Catholicism. Uh, they grew up in like a... Come home like, to Rome. Uh, <laughs> Come home. That's what they say. Come to Rome. Come, yeah, Come oh, home. Oh, yes, dude. <laughs> so funny welcome Rome. yeah welcome they grew up home. like lutheran and then they were in um what's it called like a free evangelical church okay you know um so very low church yeah yeah and so i can understand the appeal he started reading like the fathers know best and got into all that stuff and was like yeah i'm super into the pope and everything peter was a pope that old stuff um low, and, but anyways, low church was out like 25 years ago yeah for real <laughs> uh but so I, I talk to my dad about catholicism all the time because of, just because i'm interested in it and what both of us agree that we remark is really cool about it is like for a Catholic, the reason you go to mass, but above any other reason you go to mass is to receive the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the climax of the service. You can feel the whole, that's what they spend the most time on. It's like, they're thinking about it the most. And really it's the, you can tell that that's true because the main thing that, that Catholic people weigh against me as a Protestant is not my view on salvation. It's not my view on saints. It's not my view on the papacy. It's my view on the Eucharist. That's what they want to talk about. That's what they think is so wrong about Protestantism is that you and I are not receiving the Eucharist. It's why I've had a different experience, really. Well, really? Yes. That's, okay, that's it. Because that's what I get 99% of the time of a Catholic is looking at me being like, you're wrong. It's the Eucharist. Mm. And the, the way that they like try and prove me wrong is showing me like Eucharistic miracles. Mm -hmm. And like that's this, their, that's yeah, their. some like video of like like 180. <laughs> gotcha. P. Look, check out this 180p video from Argentina where the bread briefly tr transformed into Jesus's <laughs> face. That's a real link I have been sent, and it's like that's your proof of transubstantiation, bro. I don't bro, know. That's that's actually cringy though. Yes, it is. Uh, but it's and and like Catholics right now are are having they're calling it like a Eucharistic revival, like the pre, hundreds of thousands of priests gathering to be like, hey. We need to start teaching on this and explaining this well because when they poll Catholics, it's like 70% of them, some ridiculous number, don't even believe in transubstantiation, which is really problematic for priests mm -hmm. and people who are, you know, the laity. It, that's like a right. big deal, you know? It's a huge um, point of em emphasis for them, yeah. Right. So that's what I appreciate is that the climax of the service is receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. And that's something that I believe in the tradition that, I'm, that you and I are in, like the charismatic world. Okay, but hold on. Why do you appreciate that so much? I think I know, I think I know your answer, but like, why do you, because for some Catholic maybe listening to this, maybe, is like, okay. <laughs> like, like they might go, like, I think it's beautiful how in evangelical, like, I don't agree, but in evangelical churches, they're crying. They're on their knees. They're, yeah, they're yeah, lifting yeah. hands. So, but, but for you, why is that such like a point of... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not looking at it like that's cool, and I'm yeah. I'm also like I agree with functionally what they're doing. I be, I disagree with the beliefs that back it up, like the Eucharistic sacrifice, where they believe basically that they're like re-sacrificing Jesus. Well, if I, if I, I know that's kind of a very dumbed down version of what's actually going on. Not but, a re yes, not a re-sacrifice, but, but a re uh, representing the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, um, the daily sacrifice of the mass, right? Yeah, yeah. and and I'm not huge on transubstantiation. Um, I, we, you, we've talked about this before. I flirt and it just I, goes. Too I bounce far. back and forth between Calvin and Luther, between like spiritual presence and 
consubstantiation and everything. And mm-hmm. but I'm somewhere in there where I'm recognizing that this is Christ mm-hmm. in some way, and I'm receiving Jesus. That's why I recognize that as being powerful because yeah. I think in Protestantism. So, so for example, I was just talking to a buddy of mine who's in ministry and it's like one of my lifelong best friends. Like known him. We've been in the church together since we were in like first grade. Yeah. And he was telling me he was like, because he's you know once become a pastor and he's looking and um. So he read he read this John Piper article that where John Piper was arguing like, okay, is the worship or is the teaching the most important part of the service? And John Piper lands on teaching. And I was just kind of like, do we think that like when the early church was gathering, they were like, okay, time for the main part. Let's sit down and listen to somebody talk for an hour. Not that that's wrong or that teaching's not valuable, but the exciting part was we're breaking bread and we're remembering. Yeah, that was an evangelical. Core, right, that was the core of their gathering, right? So I'm like, okay, in Protestantism right now, and I'm not saying it's wrong, but we give a lot of time most churches, I would say, give a lot of time to the teaching. Some give a lot of time to worship as well. And I think the sacrament is not something that you need to sit and talk about the sacrament for an hour every time you take it. But I appreciate about what I appreciate about them is that it's reflected as being the climactic moment. This you, is the best moment of when we come together. And they're recognizing that in this, we are receiving Jesus in an extremely powerful, a potent, important way that we need for life with Christ and we need for supernatural blessing and we like and so on and so forth. They value it so highly and they're like this is when a, a memorial church is never going to take communion every single week because now, I know I know what you mean, but hold on, just break this down because there might there's probably gonna be a lot of people listening to this yeah, who are yeah. like Elijah's not a Christian. No, I'm just kidding. But who <laughs> no but 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 you're like a memorial view and you're brr, just Sorry, talk, I'm, what, I'm 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 no, running no, because good. I'm just it's talking good. to you, and no, I know no. you know. No, no, I know it's good. But what do you just back up and go through what you mean by memorial? Yeah. Okay. So I was talking to my but to our buddy John Rush, who was on the last episode. I don't know if you're releasing these in order, but you know, great. we were talking in the car on the I way here. Now. Yeah, great. And, and by and the way, he's wrong. Yeah, he is. I wrong. listened downstairs. That's what I was like, who are you talking about? I was like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Boo, John Rush sucks. Okay. He does. Uh, he's perfect. <laughs> well, we were talking in the car about, because we were talking like, hey, if you could plan your church service. And I was like, I would do... I would oh, do that's communion. how that started. I would do communion every single week, and it would be recognized as like, what I'm saying is like, this is the best part. We do it every right week. Right now. Yeah. We, because I think it, it combats the whole like non-denominational, I can't feel God's presence. You know, I'm grieving because I don't feel the, the goosebumps of the Holy Spirit. And I believe in in emotional, powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit, a thousand percent, some of my most life-changing moments where I could physically feel the presence of God, like a weight on my shoulder. You know, it's amazing. And I'm never going to say that that's bad, but it's not going to happen every time, right? But you know, if you if every single time I take, and I say this in my church when I lead the communion moments, is like when I have the bread and the grape juice or wine, whatever, in my hand, I am physically holding the presence of God in some mysterious way. This is, a, this is, the, only, this is the only physical guarantee of God's presence on the planet. Yeah. And it's in something as humble as bread and wine. That is beautiful to me. And if Jesus is really promised to be present in it, then I'm like, I have to value this because I'm receiving him here. But regardless, the memorial view looks at communion as in its common in like Baptists and other circles where it's just remembrance. There's no spiritual power to it. It's only, it, it's symbolic. Yeah, it's just symbol. It doesn't have any, uh, you know, like supernatural power. Christ is not present in it in any way. It's just we're doing it to remember. And it's a spiritual act because we're remembering the cross. Okay, but- so so you mentioned this earlier, and now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, okay, we should probably define this real quick as well. Define transubstantiation. This is the Catholic view. Now, mm-hmm. by the way, for people watching or listening, <clears throat> there's many views. Right. There's many. It's not just the Catholic view or the memorial view. Right. Because, um, but the, those are the those are the two extremes. The, yes. Yes. So what is the tra- what is the transubstantiation view? Okay, so where memorialism is like it's nothing, uh, the transubstantiation view is it ch- it changes substance. So it cha- it when it, while it looks like bread and wine, when you when we partake in it, it literally changes yeah. into the actual literal body and blood of Jesus. Yeah, um, it's it's in, it, invisibly yeah. like you can't see it. In, as a thing, but it's re- the reality of the substance of the thing that you're holding is that it becomes the body and blood of Jesus, which is really intense. Um, Physically, yeah. Yes, and it, it, and really, it only looks like bread and wine. Yes, it, it, it's it's almost like a mask. It's not right, really exactly. bread and wine. But the, that's what the substance. What it's made of is yeah, still yeah, yeah, the yeah. actual, it, yes. like no metaphor involved here. The, yes, the body and blood of Jesus. Right. Um, where so the in between views come from predominantly John Calvin and Martin Luther, and Martin Luther. Martin Luther Martin Luther taught consubstantiation, which is the more confusing of the two. Um, it this it's with the substance, right? So it's it's bread and it's the body, 
at like it's with it's around in it's with and under yeah, he yeah, said right yeah. yeah so it's like it is but martin luther what i appreciate about his view is he's like it is the body of jesus but i don't know how and it's not as simple as just saying literally that is like the super simplified version of what he's getting at is like it is the body and blood but like couldn't tell you how really and he goes on to like exp but anyway john calvin is going to say that it's not that the body and blood of jesus is present but it is jesus so jesus is spiritually present in it not necessarily his body and blood well yeah i mean he would say it's spiritually his body and blood yes right v by the power of the spirit yes and like by via faith this, yes Yes. And he would say it's still, it, it is what it is, but it's like if you're pouring water into a water bottle, um, when you have faith, it's like the cap is off and water is getting through. And when you don't, if you don't have any faith, if you're not a Christian, the water's still water. Yeah. You're still the water bottle, but it's not getting through. Right. But, it's but just you're the, bread. But you're the problem. Yeah. Right. Like when, a, when someone who doesn't believe in Christ receives it, Calvin would say this, like the, it, it's, without faith, the bread is just bread and the wine is just wine. Like it's not, it's nothing more than that, but someone with faith receives it. And so that's the difference between Luther and, 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 and the, the Luther and the Catholics and John Calvin, because John Calvin is like, it's faith that makes it what it is basically. Whereas Luther was like, no, 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 no matter who you are and you eat it, it's the body and blood of Jesus, which is why they like are super hardcore about fencing the table and being like, Hey, don't participate in this. Mm -hmm. If you're not a baptized Christian, I don't know. Wait. So this basically... So, yeah. No, we, we were just defining stuff. Yes. Yeah. What I love about Catholicism's appreciation of the sacraments, baptism as well, is one, I love recognizing things as being holy. Right? It's a reverence there. Yes, because I, I know Protestants who take their communion with iced coffee and goldfish, and it's Bro, just like... Bro, stop doing that. Pl like, stop please, po Stop dude. posting a Cheeto in your cold brew and be like, took communion at home today, I'm a little sick. Um, I will just say this. Okay. I, I actually do. I actually do try to make a real effort to, I don't care if you text me, if John texts me, Brian, Nathan, and I'm in church. I'm not saying I'm per perfect at this, but it's like, I'm trying to be engaged. Now I'm there for three services. So I'm not saying every service I'm perfectly engaged, yep. but um, usually like the service, my wife is there. I'm just like, okay, I am in church. I'm I think here. this Sunday you were sending me like eight ball pool game that's, pitching in yeah, service. Yeah, I was trying to run three games at one time. Yeah. <laughs> This podcast episode is brought to you by Theos U. Theos U is a leading theology platform designed to help Christians just like you learn the Bible, understand the Bible, and apply the Bible. They have over 100 courses on things like biblical interpretation, the book of Revelation, and they have hot topic courses like the rapture, hell, and a whole lot more. Whether you've just started reading the Bible or you've been studying it for decades, Theos U is amazing because it takes seminary classes, Bible college classes, and distills them down. It's literally like having Bible college in your pocket, but without the homework. And you can get started today for only 15 bucks a month. But guess what? I also have a 20% discount code just for you. If you're interested and you want to check out Theos U, make sure to read the instructions down below in the description of this show <laughs> so i'm addicted we were gambling actually yep lots but, of money um, on that but i will say this when i take when i when i receive communion and i like to say it like that I like, I like to receive it my phone is not anywhere near me and i stop with everything that's going on and there's a reverence that i feel yeah because because christ is present and because I am doing something holy. Yeah. Now the preaching of the word of God is holy too. I'm what I what I want to be careful of is that because of how I grew up, that I don't do a pendulum swing. Yeah. And I just go, they're so cool because they're so different than like how I grew up. Like right, right, they're right. radical. Like, oh my God. Like they actually care about the Eucharist. I gotta be honest with you. I've been to plenty of Catholic mass, not tons, but I'm just saying. And um, the preaching is not good. Yeah, totally. I am so thankful for Protestant pastors who preach yes. the Word of God. Yes. And they're not, and at the same time, they're not just a walking, talking um, commentary. They're like a real pat. They're like a real person mm -hmm. who's pastoral, prophetic. They prayed. And okay, there's pros and cons to approaches and whatnot. I'm just saying, like, we do, they do well at that. Yeah. The th priests, like, some of them will have really incredible homilies, but yes. some of them, it's just not in the job description. Yeah, so yeah. their homilies are like 
garbage. You know, it's okay. just it's just gonna like it's gonna happen because nobody. So that I agree with you a thousand percent. You know, like when you were talking about the Eucharist, I almost started crying. I like was I, feeling. No, I, I was like, I, I cry when I um, my, one of my favorite quotes. I can't. I'm I'm blanking on the author, and I think I mentioned this like two episodes ago. But who cares? The author said this, and dude, I almost cried because I read it sometimes. While I'm, I'll send it to you. But he said this. He said when my when my mind doubts and my heart flutters, or um, when my mind doubts and my heart flutters. And I can't be, and I can't understand how I'm saved. I get to when I receive the Eucharist, I get to drink his mercy, taste his goodness, and stomach his presence. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude, and I read that and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. That's because so oh great. my God, I'm actually gonna cry. Stop. Hold on. No. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, because I'm like, there's so many times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No, because there's actually so many times where like I do not feel like a good pastor or a Christian. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it's like in community, I'm reminded of like um I am I really I really suck at this and he's so faithful to me. Yeah. And like I have an ego and I'm a bad husband sometimes and I snap at my kids and I exaggerated and I lied because I want to be cool and I want you to like me. And all these different things, and um, Christ just meets me there, and He's like, "I made vows to you." Yeah, I'm like, and my faith is built up. It's manna from heaven. It's yeah. amazing. I was just at a church. Um, it's the first podcast I've ever like. I I didn't cry, but like they was, were welling. I could, yeah, I could see it. Oh my gosh! I was just at a church because um, it means so much. Uh, in LA, I was I was preaching there, and I I got a heart condition. I got a bunch wrong with me, so I was getting ready to preach, and I had spontaneously had to preach that morning, and I was just like so burnt, and I like passed out during worship, like <laughs> like, like like my face on my lap, like completely like knocked out because I just couldn't hold my head up. And when they transitioned to communion, I just got like I felt this like this well of just like excitement. Like I was like, mm. oh, this, this is so special. Right. And I got up and received that. I went back to my seat, and same thing. I just began to like weep. Mm -hmm. So the Lord was just like, here I am. Like this mm -hmm. is, yeah. And so that's why I get like, I look at Protestants and I don't want to just, it's so easy to react and be like, oh, Catholicism does everything so differently. That makes it attractive. Because that's not what makes something good is that it's just different than what you're used to. That's what, that's an immature way of appreciating something. What I appreciate about Catholicism is that they look at this and they know how important it is and mm -hmm. they refuse. And I'm like, we need that yeah. as Protestants. We absolutely need that because it's not just that theologically it has spiritual power. It's that I've experienced that power. Like mm -hmm. I've received the Eucharist and I'm like, yeah. wow. I feel renewed. Mm -hmm. I feel physically different. I feel spiritually and emotionally different. I feel like I just met with God. Like where it's like it's a sermon that's preached. Th to yes, you. exactly. That's what like Calvin would say is like it's like the gospel is being preached Presented. to it's, you. It's a, as, yeah, it's a thea uh, theatrical re um, what am I trying to say presentation yeah. of the gospel. Yeah. So okay, so I know, I know yeah, we probably don't have much time no, to talk no. about other things we appreciate about You're them, good. but I think them being let's, sacramental let's do, one, is, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Is there something else that comes to mind on what Protestants can learn from Catholics or what you appreciate about them beyond their um, understanding and appreciation of the sacraments? Yeah, I, mean, I think there are cool things. I like the way that yeah. they're structured. I, I look at it, it, Conceptually, like I like that every priest in the country is preaching on this, in, in the world, is preaching on the same scriptures. Mm -hmm. Or at least is it has it has the same readings. Right. I think that's wonderful. Um, I don't think that's necessary for Protestants to adopt that, but I think right. I think that's something to appreciate. I love their architecture. Obviously, that's so sick. Yeah. And I wish, like evangelicals weren't like even mainline Protestants have these beautiful buildings because yeah. they're 100 years old and our buildings are elementary school cafeterias. And it's not that, that not that that's bad. I'm just saying like there's something to be appreciated about the fact that they were like, ah, oh, we make beautiful things because God is beautiful and true. I love that. I also love that like every Catholic church ever there. Their community has like such a deep value of outreach. Mm. Like they actually are so much more missional because of the like the orders, like the Franciscans and all those. Like they just depending like the Jesuits especially. Like they have a very missional mindset, and the, they create like if you go to a Catholic church and you get like the the schedule thing, there's mm. so much for ever, so much for the people of the church to be involved in. There's so mm. much life of the church. Like and those priests are running daily mass forever. Mm -hmm. There's so much that they do, and I'm like. We don't have we don't have priests writing books about like burnout and all these things. You know what I mean? They're just like okay. so satisfied in Jesus. And I and not, not that that's everyone. You can't make like a huge black and white. But I appreciate about that's the general attitude of every priest I've heard. Yeah. Where they're just like they're very 
they're very happy. People yeah. who aren't like guilty Catholics, but actually practicing, I find them to be like the attitude that they have is so wonderful. Um, and yeah, I just appreciate they care about their communities yeah. and their, uh, their mindset's really great on like reaching the people around them and do, and doing good. And I also love that Catholics are so openly against abortion. Yeah. That's a, they're not scared to be like abortion bad. Now, of course there's Catholics. Okay, who, yeah, but I yeah, mean like... But, no, but you're just saying as an institution. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Okay, um, what is... So, okay, two questions, and then we'll wrap this up. The first question is this. What's the number one reason you can't be Catholic right now? And then we're just going to say a big disagreement, because those might be two different things. Yeah. You might go, oh, I really don't like how they do this or disagree, but that's not why I wouldn't be Catholic. Yeah. Okay, so first one is, why... Are you not Catholic or what's the, if somebody were to sit down and go, you're not be able to jump. What is the hurdle for you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I honestly like maybe I'm just crazy, but I, I so deeply value being charismatic and there just aren't a lot of charismatic Catholics out there. They do exist. There's a cool group called Damascus mission out in Ohio mm -hmm. that dude, I have, they have this dude, these sick worship videos. They put out these like spontaneous, oh, yeah. they bring out like upper room leaders to come lead worship for them. Well, There's this one they have, it's called like the, uh, like I love the King and they're like leading yeah. worship. They're weeping. And the priest is coming out with the Eucharistic like, adoration <laughs> thing. And I'm like, it. dude, the clashing of worlds that's happening right here is, is absolutely so sick to me. Like yeah. I thought it was so cool. Um, but it's just, it's kind of, it's not super common. Um, yeah. and I, I wouldn't want to be a part of a community that isn't earnestly desiring the gifts. Sure. So like that's essential to me. That's important to me. The same thing with like I've like I'm in a sacramental Protestant community. So like that main thing that I really love, all those things I just said that I appreciate about Catholics, I I'm looking for a Protestant community that resembles those things. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the reason I can't become Catholic is because I don't need to be. Um, okay. That's because I and because I value the teaching of the reformers and I think that they were valid. Mm -hmm. So I don't have, I don't have something that I'm looking and going, Oh, I couldn't become Catholic. It's like, I don't really want to become Catholic. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do want to be high church, but I wouldn't want to be, a, I wouldn't want to do it in the Catholic way. I would be like an Anglican or something like that before I became yeah. a Catholic, you know? And so I just look at the reformers and Why I you line that, up like with their recent changes or <laughs> I am done. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you dude, I, I'm, no, I'm aiming to become the archbishop of, of Canterbury someday. I know you are. I know you are. Can you not, can you, you you've got to be British to become that, right? Don't you? Like I'm. With the way it's going recently, I don't think it matters. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you could, the next one's going to be a woman probably. Yeah. Yeah. I could become Pope though. Yeah, you could. That's my dream. You know, I will say this regarding the Pope. I like Francis. No, uh, so, uh, no, but I'll, I'll say this is um, even if, you know, when people talk about Peter, I do think Peter holds a unique role. And I've tried to look at this honestly. And even if I were to say Peter is, you know, the bishop over bishops, if you will. Yep. I don't think it to be clear that that role is transferable or passed down. I don't even see how, if that's the case, I don't even see how you could connect the link. I because get lost, I get the, lost apostles, on that. the apostles clearly have yeah. authority, and like all that, no one disputes that. And everybody agrees their their authority is passed down, but not in the same office. Yeah. So if there is an office where Peter is over the bishops, or sorry, the you know, all the apostles, I I can't get to the spot where I'm like, and where does that continue? Yeah. See, I get confused in this because from reading historians, from what I can tell, arguably the brother of Jesus, James, was the most important figure in the New Testament church. That's what they say, because he was the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. So well, like... No, they yeah, they would say he's the most important bishop, but he's not more important than Peter. Who's... who's? I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. I know there's like a little bit of a of disagreement on that. But the, 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 the thing is this, is like, at the end of the day, the, in my opinion, one of the most compelling arguments I, I heard for Peter being the first Pope mm -hmm. and succession is what Catholics do well, but also it, in my opinion, it gets over, it's an overreach is their typology. So they, you know, that's why they call uh, Mary, 
the um the the what's in the tabernacle has the presence of God, the Ark of the Covenant, the new Ark of the Covenant. Oh, okay. It's all it's it's all a type from the Old Testament. Yeah. They draw upon that really heavy, and they would go to David, and the priesthood that follows, and they would they would point out all these things how there would be this new ruler on earth, and still you know God is king in heaven, and they would point to all these different types. I dove into it for a while, and I thought, okay, that makes sense, but you have to agree on the premise. And so, anyways, yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you go? This is a huge sticking point of like like my actual like disagreements yeah. with Catholic. Okay, um, I think honestly in history, I think the the papacy has produced a lot of good. Actually, there, yeah, there's moments where it's 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 been helpful. Yeah, there have definitely been moments where it's been really bad, <laughs> for sure. And I, I, like, you just cannot deny that. Like, when we're talking, Catholics like, won't even. I mean, a good Catholic who knows his stuff won't deny that. Yeah, either. when you look at like what was going on in the Holy Roman Empire, where like, right? I don't know if you read about like interdict when popes would like threaten when kings were do, doing things popes wouldn't like, so they would be like, hey, anyone who dies, any baby who dies right now is, or anyone who dies right now is not going to heaven. Until the king changes that. Hey, what? I learned about that in AP World History class in high school. And I never <laughs> Did forgot you really? It. Yeah, I never forgot it. Okay, funny, funny story about this. My sophomore year, I was so annoying in my history class because I'm a big history nerd. And anytime religion came up in any class ever, it was going to be like, I remember when my teachers brought up Jonathan Edwards and we were talking about the First Great Awakening and they were like For explaining real? Calvinism. And I was like, shut up, wrong, wrong, not true. Um, and just so anytime religion came up, my English teacher, we read the Scarlet Letter. She tried to say it was feminism. No, idiot, wrong. I just, hated history until I graduated. Okay, I loved it. So, so when but we, we didn't cover that stuff. When we got to, so first of all, I missed the class where we talked about the Great Schism, um, and bro, what school were you at? A public dude, school? AP World History. Yes, dude, you got to learn this stuff. It's very essential for European history. The 1054. Well, I did you know, learn about it. Just not high school. Yeah. Well, apparently you're not smart enough. I know. Uh, so, you know, I didn't get. I didn't get to be there. For the Great Schism class, and she was like, "I'm bummed you weren't here," but she was Catholic, by the way, and oh, and she's like, "But I'm kind of, but, that's, that's but I'm kind of glad that you weren't here because it would have been annoying." And I was like, "Okay, great." But she goes, "So the next, like a couple, a couple months later, she's like, so our next week's class is on the Reformation. I just want you to teach." Wait, are you I, for real? Yes. So I made a PowerPoint. I I studied the Reformation, and not just for my class, but for all of her AP. I mean, World I classes. guess it's a way for a teacher to kind of engage somebody, and yeah. Yes, but for all the AP World classes, I did the lecture on the Reformation, which I find to be hilarious. I didn't know that was allowed. I think that's insane. Wait, how old were you? I was I was like fifteen or sixteen. Wow. And my public school teacher was like, "I want." Maybe it was like her trying to sneak because she right. wanted me to like proselytize and like get my class converted or something i don't know i never thought about that but she definitely she said it was because she didn't want to hear me constantly raising my hand arguing with her on the reformation and i was like all right fine so i look at the reformation and i'm like actually so valuable um because of the thing i look at the reformation and i think the stuff that i most strongly think about is like the priesthood of all believers mm -hmm. that's one of those things where i'm like no yeah i can't that's what that's what we do so well yes that is like I could not be in a place where that was not emphasized. Yeah. That is so significant to me. That is so essential. Yeah. And uh, I know, like, I get that Catholics are not going to out loud say that they disagree with that concept because it's in the Bible, but functionally they do. Yeah. Especially, like, I mean, it's perhaps maybe it's less now, well, but at least when the time of the Reformation, when you look at the medieval world, it was like, sure. oh, if you are a non priest teaching the Bible, you will literally die. Yeah, like the, when when I was teaching my heresies course for the SU, yeah, when I got to all the medieval heresies, I was reading about them. And I was like, "This is just not heresy." These are guys being like, "Wait, priests have too much money. Wait, can I translate the Bible into another language? Wait, can I teach the Bible openly and like evangelize people?" And it was like, "Nope, heretic." That is their version of heresy was like rebellion against the church. I'm not saying the Catholic Church is that way now, but I recognize that as the value of the Reformation. At that moment, yeah. And um, so that, that's one of the things that I I'm really stuck on is the involvement of the the layperson. You're right because. It's a functional question because I heard one Catholic say this. In Israel, they were called a nation of priests. Right. They had a priesthood, but they still had designated priests. Mm -hmm. And it, it and I would go, yeah. But then functionally, they would go, you know, it, it doesn't look like what we're talking about at all. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, what's your big disagreement with 
Roman Catholicism. Oh, I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I spent some serious time looking into the papacy and looking into just, is that valid? Do I, you know, is this something I need to weigh in? Like, and there was a little moment where I was a little bit scared of yeah. just going, what if I change my mind? And then I thought this, but hold on. If I'm wrong right now, I want to know. Yeah. And um, obviously I wasn't convinced. I'm, you know, and I, here's the, here's the thing that bothers me the most in the conversations is um, cause I I've done, I've done some YouTube stuff with like this, these Catholic people who had a podcast and whatnot back in the day. And they act like Protestants are the only ones who use private judgment. You guys just have a million popes. You know, everybody's interpreting the Bible for themselves and it's just me and my Bible. It's just me and my Bible. And this is what the Bible says, you know, and it's like, and, and you know, and, and you guys just all, you know, it's private interpretation. Everybody here is just kind of reading it and then applying it their, their own way. You know, we have the church. What came first, the church or the Bible? You ever heard that before? <laughs> yes, The church or the Bible? The church gave us the Bible. The church gave us the Bible. So therefore, submit to the church. That's an important distinction. Submit to the church. That's an important distinction but, that the church gave us the Bible and not God gave the Bible to the church. That's yeah. an important distinction between Protestants and Catholicism. For sure. But, okay, but all that being said, um, what was I saying right before the church and the Bible? <laughs> the church and the Bible? Um, it was uh, the papacy. Yeah. And, oh, oh yeah, I was just saying, and obviously I'm not con convinced of that, but I do feel like I walked away uh, feeling like I knew their arguments much better. And there was argument, some arguments I learned and I went, okay, I'm not saying that their, that their line of thinking is totally irrational. There is a line there, but I just, I, I don't get there. And, um, and you know, I feel pretty safe. This was like, this guy was, when I was talking with him, he was like, what if you're wrong? I said, you know, I feel pretty safe because I do, I do believe, even if I'm wrong about everything else, I do believe what, what the church has believed on all the major stuff. Yeah. And so if I'm wrong, they're all wrong. Yeah. Nothing that I, on the major stuff. Yeah. Nothing that I believe is contradictory to the, like the ecumenical councils. Yeah. hundred you know? percent. And so I think that what's, what I what I honestly look at Catholicism and dislike is how much of their what they're doing today is Protestant reactionism. I like feel frustrated. I'm like, can you just do your own thing? I do not, feel like we started that war. Well, totally, but to, to some degree. But yes, but I, today I, yeah. I feel like most Protestants just don't care anymore, except for the the crazy fundamentalists who are always going, Catholics are going to hell. Yeah, like no, dude, Catholics that are following Jesus are Christians. Chill out. And so yeah, I get we have, we have crazy weirdos in our thing too, bro. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so yeah, we got people in our church who are going to hell too. So like, <laughs> yeah, chill out. Yeah, but I think trust me. so much, man. I was reading. There's this guy uh, on Instagram called Redeem, Redeem Zoomer, and he he makes these memes. And there's this one I absolutely love it. Like, it was like a good such an argument like brought me relief for like lifelong fear of like, am I going to hell because I'm not a Catholic? Um, and uh, what he was saying was like, oh, the, the Catholics would be like, uh, this is the one true church. And he was like, Eastern Orthodox would be like, this is the one true church. Coptic Orthodox would be like, this is the one true church. And he's like, the only, the only way you can get to the bottom of what the one true church is, is if you go through hundreds of years of historical documents and church arguments, all these things, and come somehow after, like, especially with the, the Coptic and Orthodox, they're mm -hmm. in Eastern, right, they're both right, going, right, you, right. Have, you, can't, you can't be the other one, right. you have to be us. Right. Well, the right. only reason to look at the distinction, the only way to get to the distinction of those two things is to go look at like, oh, their disagreements over Greek language a thousand years ago. That's, God expects everybody on earth yes, yes. to figure out the conclusion of that argument. Right. Like the, yeah. And that's how they're supposed to determine. So I look right. at that same thing. Like the fact that the Orthodox Church is also claiming to be the one true church makes me feel relieved about the fact that yes. I don't need to be a Catholic. Because yeah. I'm like, you know, they're saying the same thing. And for someone to tell the difference would require such a long amount of time, like historical research that Christian, there are Christians that are not in the West that do not have access to that information. So I'm just like, I don't think God is saying only Roman Catholics are getting saved or whatever. For sure. I'll, okay. I'll end it here, but I'll just say this. Um, Pastor Dick Iverson, who was the, the founder of the church in Portland that started that network of churches, MFI and all that. Um, I, he said one time that between the Catholics Coptics, all, you know, reformed Pentecostals, you know, all he said, he viewed it this way. It's like all the 12 tribes of 
is real. Yeah. And everybody thinks their true is real by themselves. Yeah. And he's like, and there's there's some corruption in some, and there's some good in others, and at the end of the day, God's going to unite us all together, you know, as a find the remnant of each, if you will, and bring us all together. And yeah, yeah, of course, our theology will get corrected. You know, not not mine as much as others, but, but <laughs> definitely, some, I'm yeah. perfect on everything. Yeah. I made an analogy once that the church is like a family, like the Catholics are like the oldest siblings, the mm-hmm. Eastern Orthodox like the weird emo middle sibling. And the Protestants are the, like, the youngest who get spoiled and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's basically the situation we're in. True. Like, That's a good one. That's good. I like and that. And then, and then, like the the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses are like the. No, you, <laughs> no, you, you no, better go hard enough. No, they're like the. <laughs> like, 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 if you're gonna say like they're the weird aunt. No, I'm no, like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. It's like yeah. the, it's like the maid who's claiming that your dad got her pregnant and he oh. totally didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you say it one more time looking at the camera? What do you want me to say? <laughs> Dang it, I was ready. Hey, can you, can you just say this? I love Austin Moore and Sexy Theology. Great. Goodbye. Jeez. Hey, come say hi. We're just wrapping up. Oh, yeah. What is that? What is that? I, you want to try I love Austin Moore no, and Sexy interested. Theology. I love... Wait, you're saying in front of my camera. Can you move your butts yeah. in the camera, Francis? No. No, Okay. Just, just you, that's the camera I'm looking at. You're standing in front of it. What are we, what are we doing? Please contact my loved ones. Hey, why is there almost no sauce in this? Who ate it? Nobody. Look at this. They're $35 green beans, Austin. They're $13.75. You'll eat them and you'll like it. $13.75. All right. All right. See you later, Calm Sexy down. Theology. Calm down. Hey, thank you, everybody, for listening. Elijah, thank you. Later. God bless. Woo!